Thank you, Peter. And uh, as Peter said, I'm a curriculum developer at Oracle in the Java group. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how Java garbage collection works, both on some of the older uh, garbage collectors that come with Java, like the uh, you know five and six and seven, of course. And then we're going to talk about the G1 garbage collector a little bit as well. So let me um, get started here. So first we have our standard disclaimer. If I make any future pointing statements or anything like that, this is your standard dic disclaimer that Oracle reserves the rights uh, as far as when we time those features, et cetera, et cetera. So please uh, read through that if you're interested in that. So while you're doing that, I am going to talk through a little bit about the prerequisites for this course or this talk. And basically, we just uh, you just need to have a little uh, Java programming experience, you know, so you understand like objects and things like that. Um, you don't really need a lot to understand this. We're mainly talking about the internal of the garbage collector, so um, it should be a good topic for just about anybody. Um, and then I will be doing some command line stuff, but but not a heck of a whole lot, not super um, complicated or anything. And then um, all the features I'm talking about. But, well, when it gets to the G1 garbage collector, that requires at least Java 7 update 4. And then, of course, we would prefer that you use the latest version. Um, and when we, as of yesterday, when we did the did this dry run for this presentation, the latest was Java 7 update 25. Actually, Java 7 update 40 came out yesterday, so that would actually be the latest. But um, if you want to do anything in here or in the OBE, you need to use the latest version of Java 7. And we also will be using something there at the, the bottom. You can see uh, Visual VM and the Visual GC plugin. Visual VM comes with uh, the Java JDK. So uh, that's a free, free tool that uh, comes with all versions of Java. OK. And I see a lot of people are answering those polls. We appreciate that. So continue to do that. And I am going to uh, start with our talk. So first, I'm going to do just a little bit of an overview uh, very quickly to, to hone in on what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Java language just briefly, and then look at the Java hotspots, the JVM architecture, and then we're going to focus in on what parts of the uh, JVM we're going to talk about today. So as we know, Java is an object-oriented programming language that's an improvement upon C and C++. Uh, the, one of the main features and what we'll be talking about today is the automatic garbage collection. So in a language like C, if you allocate objects, it is then your job to deallocate objects, whereas in Java, that is automatic. And that's the, the garbage collector takes care of that, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And of course, Java is uh, compiled into bytecode, which is, you know, class files, we're all familiar with that, which makes Java cross-platform so that It'll run on pretty much any operating system or hardware platform. And of course, uh, any Java application runs in its own Java virtual machine. So here is a picture of what the uh, JVM internals look like. We have our various parts, the class loader system that loads our class files. We have um, our method area, our heap, the threads, uh, the native interfaces, native threads. Then our execution engine, which has a JIT compiler, and a garbage collector. So today, I'm not going to focus too much on the JIT compiler. Well, not at all, actually. I'm going to focus just on the heap. That's where we store our objects. And then the garbage collector, the thing that manages those, those objects in memory for us. So to start with, um, I'm going to go over a little bit of just basic garbage collection concepts a little bit, and then we'll go specifically into the, the Java generational garbage collection, collectors. Um, so basically, your garbage collector job is basically to allocate new memory objects. And then once we have those objects in memory, we want, we want to ensure that we can keep track of the live ones, and we don't delete those by accident. And then if we have any that we aren't using anymore, then we delete those and get rid of those in a timely manner. So this slide shows uh, one of the first concepts I want to mention, which is called marking. So one of the main jobs of the garbage collector 
is to go through memory and identify which objects are alive and which are not. So that's what this picture is trying to show. So the first picture is our memory before we've marked it. So we just have objects there. We don't know what's what. Then when the garbage truck collector goes through and marks the memory, we have live objects and then unreferenced or, unli or not live objects that we mark. So the live ones are blue and the, the ones that are not are, are red. So then after we've identified which objects are no longer referenced, then we have to go through and delete them or in a sweeping stage of some sort and get rid of them. So this, this particular picture shows that we've gone through and we've deleted all the objects and then we're, we have pointers to where our free spaces are in memory. So if we want to allocate new objects, we have a data structure that points to where we can put them. Now this is one way of doing that. There's, the other way to do that is to take a little more time and actually compact your memory. So this slide shows compacting. So if you take a little more processor time and go through your memory and then compact the, the live objects, move them to the front of your memory, then that allows you to allocate a lot easier because you don't have to keep track of all the open spaces. They're all contiguous in your memory. So by contacting or compacting memory, <coughs> we can uh, allocate uh, new objects a lot faster. So why use generational GC? So if we just use the principles we talked about, we would have to go through and uh, look at every piece of memory every time we needed to, to reclaim some of our unused or our non-live objects. And this would ignore typical um, object behavior. There's been a lot of studies done on this. And it turns out for most applications, the um, objects are, tend to not live long. They tend to have very short lives. They're allocated and they aren't used a lot. Um, so they go away very quickly. So generational garbage collection takes, takes advantage of this fact and tries to improve performance based on this concept that most objects don't live long. So what does a generational garbage collector look like? This is kind of what, well, this is what the memory looks like. What we do is we partition the memory into various spaces. So we have what's called young generation, and that's where new objects are allocated. And since they live, they, they don't tend to live long, they tend, most objects tend to be allocated and deallocated in that space. Then we have old generation or tenure generation, and you'll see both terms used. That's where long-lived objects, that's where we keep those. That tends to be bigger than uh, the young generation and, of course, keeps the, the older uh, live, uh, live objects. And then finally, we have the permanent generation, and that stores basically metadata and um, that sort of information. And it doesn't, it doesn't change as much as the other two. It's kind of more static than the other two uh, areas. So if we uh, zoom in or, or look a little bit closer at the young generation, we'll see that that's broken into a couple different areas. So we have a space called the Eden space, and that's where we allocate new objects. So any new object that's allocated goes into the Eden space. So it'll go there. And then we have two other young generation spaces called the survivor spaces. And these will be referred to, they have two names, kind of. So they'll, be, they'll be called the from space or the to space. But they're generally labeled, if you look at any monitoring tools or anything, they'll be labeled S0 and S1. And I've got some slides here we'll go through and explain how the from and the to work. And uh, then I think you'll get a, a handle for that. And then, of course, we saw the old and the permanent um, areas. OK, so young generation space. That's where most of our garbage collection takes place. Garbage collections are frequent. Um, and they typically are fast because we're, we're not dealing with that many objects. They're, they're short-lived. 
and we can do garbage collections quickly. And, and these garbage collections are called minor garbage collections. They don't take a lot of time. The old generation space is for you know old objects, and it tends to be a little bit bigger than young generation, and it grows more slowly. But it can be as, as but it tends to get bigger because it keeps all the live objects in it that have been around in your application for a long time. We um, garbage collections on this area tend to take quite a bit longer, and so they're called major garbage collections. And we want to try to minimize or avoid those if we can, if we want our applications to be really responsive. So this slide, we're just once again looking at. So we've got young generation. That's where new objects go. And we'll talk about the aging process. But eventually, the long-lived objects will end up in old generation. And young generation garbage collections are called minor garbage collections. And old generation. Garbage collections are called major garbage collections. OK, so what I'm going to talk about next is the process of allocating and aging objects in the young generation area, or the young, yeah, the young generation area. So this picture shows are three areas. So at the top here, we've got the Eden space. And then below, we've got S0 and S1 are two survivor spaces. So we allocate new objects into the Eden space until it fills up. When the Eden space is full, that triggers a minor garbage collection. Now, this is a stop the world event. The stop the world event is defined as the event where all the application threads in your application stop. So of course, we want to make these as short as possible so that your application can continue uh, executing. So all young ge or minor garbage collections are stop the world events. So anyway, so we've just triggered that. This picture shows that our Eden space is full, and we can't we don't have any room for that, so we're going to do a minor garbage collection. So the next step, we're going to go through and do our marking, which I talked about earlier. So we've, we've identified the live objects. And anything that's alive, we're going we're gonna to take and we're going to put on a survivor space. So notice I have four objects here. And I'm putting them on a survivor space. And notice that I put an age on them. So these all have an age of one now. They survived one minor garbage collection. And then um, if we look at the next slide, we'll see that this, I put, call this part 2A. Because after, after you do your garbage collection and have copied stuff over, the Eden space is cleared and the other survivor space is cleared. So in this case, we didn't have anything on it. But we'll see as we move through the aging process that we will actually be flip-flopping between the two survivor spaces. So let's go on to the next step. So we go to our next minor garbage collection. So once again, we're allocating objects to the Eden space. And you can see here, this time we have two live objects. Now notice if you look at the survivor spaces, I've got um, a from and a to label on them this time. So S0 is the from and S1 is the to. So any objects that survive on the old survivor space get moved from the from space to the to. So I have two objects there that have an age of 1. They've survived this garbage collection. Their age gets incremented to 2. And then the stuff that's from Eden gets a 1 and gets added to the two survivor spaces. So just like in the, about two slides ago, what we're going to do is we're going to clear the Eden space. So all the memory is going to be uh, deleted from that. That's going to be cleared. And the F0 is going to be cleared. And then all, all that survives will be on the two space. And we'll see in the next diagram what happens to that. So if you look at the S1 space, now that becomes the next garbage collection. That becomes the from survivor space. So what happens is we're moving the objects. As we age the objects, we're moving them from the from space to the two space. And essentially, S1 and S2, or S0 um, are flipping those roles, the from and two. 
So it flips back and forth. One's always the from, the other's always the to, and then the next garbage collection, they flip-flop. So once again, we're going through, we fill up the Eden space, and we're aging objects again. So the two space this time is F0. We have two objects that live, two garbage collections, two minor garbage collections. Those become an age of three. Then we have one there that survived ahead an age of one. That becomes an age of two. And then we have a new one from Eden, which becomes one. So you can see that as objects survive longer, they get aged and are moving back and forth on the survivor spaces. OK, so this process continues. So this is showing a promotion of, of some objects from the young generation to the old generation. And what we have, what this is called is we have an age threshold. So there's some, no, there's some age, and I think the default is 15. But in this example, we have the threshold set to 8. So once a object in the new generation reaches an age of 8, then it gets promoted to the old generation. So you can see here in my from survivor space, I have two objects that have reached that age, and so they're automatically promoted to old generation. And then our stuff that's younger, this one is age two here, that just gets copied to the two space, and it starts to age, continues with the aging process. So basically, that's what happens. We go through objects, we keep allocating objects to the Eden space when it's full, that triggers a garbage collection. And uh, we move objects to the survivor spaces, we age them, and then eventually they get moved to the old generation, where long-lived objects live. So just to sum up, um, Eden space, new objects, that's where they go. We have the survivor spaces, those age objects, and that's what we use as, uh, to copy our, our, our objects that are still alive as they age, minor garbage collections are always stop the world events. So that means all application threads stop. And garbage collections can be, uh, we have a, a number of different garbage collectors, and I've, I've listed a few here. We have some that are single threaded, which is the serial garbage collector. Then we have several multi-threaded or, multi or, or parallel garbage collectors, and those include the parallel the concurrent and the G1 garbage collectors. And uh, we're going to talk about the G1 a little bit more later here. And if you want any more information, and I'll, I'll keep referring to this, but this talk is based on some OBEs on the OLL, and all the details, all the information I'm going over is in those OBEs. So you don't really need to write anything down. It's all already out there on the OLL for you. OK. And then, uh, to finish up, we still, I haven't mentioned the old generation that much, but once again, that's for long-lived objects. When we garbage collect that, it's time and resource intensive. That's why those are called major garbage collections. So we try to minimize those if we can. And then the permanent generation is mostly metadata, and if you look at that, it's, it's mostly class information, stuff like that, and it's pretty static. The, gen, the permanent generation does not generally change size that much. OK. So with that, I'm going to do a quick demo. So let me take control here. Oh, and I forgot. Uh, Peter is also putting up a po another poll, so please um, Please uh, take the time to uh, answer the questions there. That's, we'd appreciate that. That would be great. OK. And if everybody's seeing my, hopefully, yes. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Visual VM on a sample application to kind of give you a live view of what's happening with the garbage collection. So 
In this window here, I've got a command line. You don't need to write it down because, once again, it's in the OBE. So if you look at the OBE, you'll find the command line either just like this or very similar to it that you can run at home. And all the stuff I'm showing you could do basically on any platform. So I'm using a demo application from the demo and sample applications that you can get with uh, JDK. So if you just go and download uh, the JDK, and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the demos and samples. You can download those as well. So this is a graphics demo. It's called the Java 2 demo. And it just shows off some of the Java 2 graphics. I'm going to turn it up here a little bit. Maybe take a little more memory. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run J Visual VM. And the command to use to run that is J Visual VM. There we go. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, here's my, so this is all the, the, the live systems. The Visual VM is one of the JVMs. And then here's the, the Java 2 demo. I'm going to go open that up. And I'm going to jump right to the Visual GC tab. That's a plugin that comes with, um, close that. OK. This is a plugin that you can download for free for uh, Visual VM. And you can see here, we have all our elements that I talk, just talked about. We have our Eden space. You can see it filling up. And then you can see the objects being copied back and forth from S1 to S0 and vice versa. So there we see we just flipped. And then you're going to see some of the data is going to get promoted. See, so old just went up a little bit. And then here we've got um, we've got a, what's called a histogram, class histogram. And that shows the aging process here. So we see the max tenuring threshold. Remember, I talked about that. I didn't, didn't call it that, but that's what, that's what the, the max age is in the uh, young generation. It's 15. And then here, we're showing the number of objects that are at each stage in the aging process. So we have mostly stuff that's an age of one for this application. OK, so I'm going to hide that. And then you can see here. We have uh, graphs of the Eden space. We can see here that it's going, you know, we're filling it, emptying it, filling it. And then you can see the various survivor spaces as we're flip-flopping between the two. And then you can see this application is steadily the old generation. We hit one garbage collection right there, one major, and it looks like we're building towards another one. And you can see permanent generation pretty much stable. OK. So, um, and one last thing here, there's a lot more information. You can actually do some profiling and stuff with Visual VM. I'm going to show the monitor tab. And once again, that shows we have a, a graph of our heap, just like a bigger one that's easy to, to look at. And I can look at the perm gen, as you can see, stable, doesn't change much. And then here we have our, our heap, what we're using, and then the changes in memory size as we go <coughs> through our various garbage collections. OK, so let me shut this down. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close that guy. And let's see here. Oops, we don't want that guy up. There we go. And there we are back to our presentation. And thanks, everybody, for taking the poll. We appreciate that. So next, I'm going to talk about the G1 garbage collector. And um, any talk of, of the G1, you have to make sure you understand the, how the old garbage collectors worked, because the G1 works in a similar way, but a different way. So the G1 garbage collector is the future garbage collector for Java. And it's designed to be for multiprocessor machines with large memories, which, I mean, admitted even like our laptops now might be considered multiprocessor machines with large memory uh, to just what we had a few years ago. 
So the idea is that G1 will work on those kind of systems. It will have very good low pause time, so it will be very responsive. But at the same time, it will have a great degree of throughput. So that means just how much stuff it can do in a period of time. So basically, it will be you know, a well-balanced garbage collector. And we can see here that um, you know, hopefully it will have more pr predictable pause times. Um, it will compact the free space and uh, concurrently there's some concurrent stuff as well as parallel stuff. And you know, like once again, it's just well balanced. Okay. So the next slide here, um, we look at so the G1 is works, it has the same principles that we just talked about in the older garbage collectors, but it implements those principles in a different way. So I'm going to show you that here in just a sec. But we don't have, so with the, the older garbage collectors, we have a sign, we take our heap and we split it up. You know, this area of memory is young generation. This memory is old generation. This is permanent. We just, it's segmented like that. And every piece of memory has a specific role, and that doesn't change. Um, but uh, I'll get to that in just a sec. Um, young generation collections are still stop the world. So that's always keep that in mind. Young generation collections are always stop the world. And then uh, young generation is done parallel so that if you have multiple threads on your system, all those threads will be used to do the garbage collection. And uh, um, all right, so let's move on here. So the memory area. So what G1 does is it takes the whole memory area and then segment, segments that into like equal size regions. And then each of those regions are assigned roles. So let's take a look at a, at a picture of that. And that's this slide here. So you can see that we've taken our heap and we've got all these various regions of similar sizes, but instead of segmenting them like we did before, say, oh, this, you know, this is this, and this is this, we assigned various small segments roles. So certain memory segments are assigned Eden space, certain are assigned survivor space, certain are assigned old generation. So it gives it's a lot more flexible this way. So if you need to resize like your young generation or your old generation, it's super easy because we have all these various similar size memory or, uh, memory chunks that can then be reassigned to different roles. So this is an example of um, what the uh, young generation uh, might look like on G1. And we're going to do a quick uh, young generation garbage collection. Uh, just a second, we get a drink. Okay. So once again, we would go through when uh, we consider when our areas are filled up, all those memory segments that we assign to be young generation. Once those are full, we're going to do a garbage collection. So that's what that shows here. And once again, we're just going to copy it. But once again, instead of copying that to that specific area, we can copy it anywhere in here where we have um, memory memory blocks assigned to that role. So this uh, you can see from the legend, the young generation was light green and uh, the old generation is light blue. And then stuff that's been recently copied is the darker colors. So we've just, uh, that's essentially our survivor spaces now, that dark green area. And then um, that dark blue is the new old generation space. OK. So the G1 garbage collector is a little more, it's fairly complex. Um, these are some of the steps that it goes through. And notice that uh, we have, most of them are stop the world events. So they're generally, when it's a stop the world event, that means that step this is piggyback on some sort of garbage collection, usually. Not always, but usually. And then uh, the other two there, the, two, the step two and step three, 
those can be done concurrently. So while your application threads are running, we're actually doing some tasks like marking our memory, trying to figure out what's live and what's not. And the root region scanning is the same sort of thing. It's, it's scanning to see what's live and what's not in the old generation areas. So let's go through and see what uh, the various steps would be for um, the G1 garbage collector. We've got some pictures here. So the initial marking phase, what we're going to do is um, that's piggybacked on a young generation garbage collection. So when we do a young generation garbage collection, we're also going to go through and we're going to mark, OK, what regions are live and uh, which, which aren't. So we're, we're looking for you know, those equal size memory regions to see who's live, who's not. And we're doing that at the same time we're doing the, garbage, the minor garbage collection. So then in the concurrent marking phase, this is the concurrent stuff. This is happening while your application is running. While, that, while we're doing that, we're looking for any regions that might not be live anymore, and uh, specifically in the old generation. So if we find any of those, we're going to mark them. They're denoted here by an X. And we're going to get rid of those during a remark. So if this is happening concurrently. This doesn't always happen on every garbage collection. But we're constantly doing this to, to try to mark stuff so that when we do have a garbage collection, we can take care of this stuff. So then we get to the remark phase. And that's where we do our final marking. And we get rid of any of those areas that during our concurrent marking that we find said, oh, those are empty. We don't need those anymore. So we can reclaim those. So you can see the two red areas from before. I'm going to jump back. Those are gone in the remark. And the remark uses what's called a snapshot beginning algorithm, which is much faster than any of the algorithms, algorithms we use in the older garbage collections. So we've done our, our final marking, and we've got rid of any old stuff that, uh, that we don't need anymore. So the copy and cleanup phase, uh, G1 is very flexible. So it can determine. To, to meet its performance goals, it will determine like how much work to do in a phase. So in this example here, we've got, um, notice we've, we've highlighted both young generation stuff and some old generation stuff. So we're going to do this copy and cleanup. We're going to probably do a, a, a garbage collection. And then at the same time, we're going to go through and clean up a lot of these objects. Um, Stuff that we do during a, a copy and cleanup include uh, we scrub the remembered sets. And a remembered set is essentially um, like the data structure that keeps track of the objects in each one of those regions. So we're going to take care of that and copy and clean up. And then uh, you know, empty anything that's empty. And you'll see two different kinds of GC pauses with G1. So you'll see a GC pause young if you're looking at the uh, output from like verbose GC. And that's just a young generation collection normal. And then if you do one like this that I have pictured here, that'll be a GC pause mixed. And then after that phase, you see here we've uh, cleaned up the memory. We've uh, created a new. Uh, smaller old generation area regions that have been assigned to that. And then we also obviously have some survivor space where we have some young generation stuff. So you can see that the principles are the same for G1. We're still doing, you know, we've got our Eden space. We have our survivor spaces. It's just the implementation is different and it's more flexible. So you still have all those concepts. But it, and because it, we use the regions and we can use the regions however we want, we have a lot more flexibility on sizing the various regions and doing what we need to do. And in addition, the garbage collector is just smarter about the amount of work it needs to do so it can like put stuff off, so it needs to meet a particular response time goal. And uh, so it's just generally pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to do one last demo here. 
So let me share my desktop again. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to run the G1 garbage collector with some command line options. So this one here, I'm going to run, I'm going to put this in the center for you guys, hopefully the center. So this time I'm just running for both GC. So I'm running the, uh, our, our sample graphics application, our demo. So this time with G1. So this, this is the verbose GC output and you can see a lot of the stuff I just talked about. It's very clear as it's happening here. Um, see, we have young generation pauses. We've got um, our concurrent marking going on. We've got a remark. See that? And then look at the, those uh, those uh, garbage collections. We have a young, and then we have a mixed, which I showed in that one uh, that one slide, and then we mostly have young. So you see, most of the time it will be young, but when it has an opportunity to clean up the um, old generation a little bit, it will. Okay, so that's uh, verbose GC. As you can see, it's pretty much marked. You can see what's happening, and you can see the times. But we do have, if you use um, the command line option, uh, print GC details, Let's see here if I can find it. There we go. So I'm using the G1GC and I'm using print GC de detail. This is kind of a fire hose mode. And this, with G1, this one prints a lot of information. So I've restarted that. And you can see I'm spitting out a lot more detailed information. We're still seeing some of the, well, there's Eden and survivors. It's kind of hard to even uh, keep up with it. I'm going to stop it. We can see here there's a ton of detailed information that you can dive into and uh, uh, look at. Now there's a, you might imagine it's kind of hard to know what all this stuff is. So there is a, so let me go back to the, oh, let's see here, before I do that I'm going to jump here. So there is a blog entry by one of our, actually I didn't want to do that, I want to, let's see if we can copy this guy, by one of our engineers at Oracle that details all that information you saw from print GC details for G1. So I'm going to paste that into chat. And if you just look at Poonam's blog, you'll see all that information you can read up on that. So uh, once again, we appreciate you coming, um, and we, we appreciate you using Java and all the, we've got a lot of cool features coming out here. Uh, Java 1's coming soon, we'll be talking about that there. Um, and of course, uh, one of the main reasons we're doing this talk is to point you towards the Oracle Learning Library. And um, anyway, so the Oracle Learning Library Everything I talked about is from two OBEs on the Oracle Learning Library. So all the command line options, there's a lot more information than what I talked about because I don't have time to go through everything. But if you want to learn about command line switches for G1, uh, how you can tune it a little bit, stuff like that, it's all in those OBEs. And they're at oracle.com slash OLL.